Always a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Good to Meanwhile, see you. Thanks, guys. The batter, battle rather over equal pay for female athletes went into overdrive and overtime today as the U.S. women's soccer team took a World Cup victory lap, ticker tape parade through the Canyon of Heroes in Lower Manhattan. Take Equal pay, they're chanting. Fans in a celebratory mood otherwise, but the team remain focused on their bigger goal, if you will, of obtaining equal pay with the men. Team captain Megan Rapino has been making the media rounds anywhere that will have her, providing that they lean to the left, of course. But today she told the crowd, really, for the moment, it's all about unity. It's time to come together. This conversation is at the next step. We have to collaborate. It takes everybody. This is my charge to everybody. Do what you can. Do what you have to do. Step outside yourself. I, I like the shades. Nothing says it's time to come together and step outside yourself like alienating half the country by refusing to meet with the president. But Democrats here in New York, including the governor, Andrew Cuomo, signing legislation at that parade, extending equal pay laws. Also, Mayor Bill de Blasio, who is technically running for president, says that if he got elected to that role, which is likely not going to happen. He would sign an executive order guaranteeing equal pay for all athletes. I'm not sure if that's allowed, but that's what he's saying. So is it time for female athletes to earn the same as male athletes, or are you guys just a bunch of misogynistic white supremacist losers? Panel joins me now, starting with attorney, author, and liberal commentator Danielle McLaughlin, Reason.com associate editor and author of Panic Attack, brand new book, Got to watch it. Man with the best name and pointiest hair on set, Robbie Suave, and National Review online reporter and host of the brand new Fox Nation show, Sincerely Cat. It's Cat Tim. Hello, everybody. Hey, hey, Hello. guy. So, Cat, I got a. I just had to crack up over this. I got a yes. kick out of it, so to speak. It's a soccer joke. There you go. I like that. Uh, <laughs> Rapino was out there saying, "You will not silence us." Right. And she strikes me as like the least silent person on planet Earth. Right. I didn't see anyone trying to silence her, which I thought was really strange. And also talking about unity when you are clearly putting yourself in a separate category saying, hey, I don't want anything to do with the Republicans. No, I won't go to the White House. I don't really ever understand the White House boycott because as a libertarian, there's never been a president where I've been like, yes, everything this dude thinks. But if I were invited to the White House, I would definitely go. Because when I'm invited anywhere, I generally go, uh, especially <laughs> if there are snacks. Which I think Trump does provide snacks, snacks to athletes, yeah. as we've seen sometimes. Maybe she, maybe that's the problem. Maybe she just doesn't think there's going to be snacks and this whole thing could be avoided. Robbie. I, so I was talking about this on the God. radio today, and we had callers calling in. She has every right to say whatever she wants. I'm like, yeah, yeah. she yeah. totally does. She does. Say whatever you want, but we also have the right to notice and be annoyed right. and sort of argue with her, right? That's how this and works, And it I is think. annoying, and I think most Americans get annoyed when they're, uh, they're Hollywood people and athletes. Like, all they want to do is talk about politics every time they get a microphone instead of just kind of enjoy the moment they're in. I think that annoys people. But that said, like... Are people really that angry? This feels a little bit about the whole black uh, Ariel princess from Little Mermaid casting. Actually, no one was angry about this casting. I was no furious. One was, <laughs> no one, <laughs> no one was mad about the black stormtrooper. No one is mad about the new Terminator movie. It's like they're trying to say that there's a controversy to like drum up like ratings in yeah. this national circus. The but actually, is, people aren't that upset. <laughs> I'm a huge sports fan, and part of the reason that I'm a huge sports fan is because it's an escape a diversion from politics, which can be soul crushing. Here is like the world champion. She comes back and goes on a political TV tour. I know that's her choice, but it all just feels kind of poisonous. All right, Danielle, on the point of equal pay for women in sports, I'm trying to figure out how this would work beyond soccer, let's say. So let's say right. Bill de Blasio got his way and they right. mandate equal pay. Would the New York Liberty of the WNBA have to be paid as much Maybe this is a bad example using the Knicks, but as much as the Knicks or the Nets and the NBA, regardless of how much revenue they bring in, that uh, seems... I, I just don't see how that works. And in, 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 functionally speaking, you know, the, the, the difference in revenue between the men's game and the women's game, even though the, clearly the American women are far better than the American men as it relates to the World Cup, the revenue difference is so extraordinary that if you paid them the same, there would be some crazy multiple of actual revenues. 
I don't think the solution here is government, and I say this as somebody who actually kind of mm. likes government and actually thinks that government can do certain things. I think there is space for a sponsorship. I think there is space for other ways where these women can be paid, frankly, what they're worth. They're doing incredible things. They're incredible role models. They play great soccer. I actually saw the parade today accidentally. I was at the DMV. Crazy came out. There she was. Well, I knew it was happening. Um, it was much better than the DMV experience, as you might imagine. But I think there are ways that the market can speak to this, and I think actually there could be a well, Nike, there could be an Adidas. Well, I think there are ways of getting point, this done. Robbie, on sponsorships, there's a part of me that wonders if Rapino is sort of going the Colin Kaepernick route yeah. because it works, right? You better watch it. Right? Well, but also, apparently, I just like read this in the post, the Washington Post today, but the women earn like a greater percentage of the overall profits from right. their soccer than the, 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 though the, the total is lower, the percentage is higher. So I don't like what it's I think equal pay equality? is not enough. Women should make more than men do because we have to buy tampons and lip gloss and you do not. Well, the thing I'll say about Ka that Kaepernick law. is uh, there's two things going on. So the one thing is the equal pay, but she, she actually 2016, she was one of the very first athletes to kneel at a game in support of him. And she has actually written op-eds about this, and she's very clear about why she does that. I think that's a little bit separate than the equal pay piece. But she has said, I stand in solidarity. I have yep. empathy for African Americans who are dealing with some of the things that I'm not. And yeah, she, I, you know, I respect her, her answers, using her platform to do that. She's kind of talking like America's sort of a rotten place. But she said, no White House for her, but yes, she would meet with AOC, Pelosi, or Schumer, and she would be happy to have, quote, a substantive conversation with anyone who believes the same things that she does. So that seems so much for you. Yeah. 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 Panel substantive. back here in a few minutes. Thank you. Stand by. Meanwhile, economists say the national debt might cripple our nation for decades, but the president's top economic advisor says, eh, He's not too worried about it. I'll ask Utah Senator Mike Lee, one of the most fiscally conservative members of that chamber, how big this crisis really is, what it could mean for you, next.